knowing when to sidestep or sidewalk. So I, I answered this on stream actually a while ago, <laughs> but I can answer it again. Um, the general idea of sidestepping and sidewalking is that you sidestep when you think that your opponent is going to do a move that you know how to, how to move around. So for example, let's say I'm playing against Heihachi and I, I, have an, I have a feeling that he's going to do forward four, right? He's going to do like a crouch dash forward four. So obviously I can step that to the left, punish, easy, right? The problem comes in with knowing which way moves track, right? That's the problem that most people have because they don't know which moves track to which direction. So another example, a really easy example, is Jack. So let's do Jack. So Jack, he has four key moves, right, that we'll talk about. He has FF1, down back one, two one, and, and DF2, right? So these are like the two main moves, right? FF1 and down back one. So we'll make him do a jab in the FF1. So, obviously, Jackhammer, notoriously weak to sidestep left, can move around that very easily, get a punish. So if I think Jack is, you know, this Jack player is doing a lot of two jab into FF1, I can even, even if I just throw out a little sidestep guard, you know, let's be safer and let's just throw out a sidestep guard. We also make it with completely. The big thing to note is that most of the time when you move, sidestep guard is what you want to do, right? Because I'm, I, if I just do this little sidestep guard, I make the move whiff, and I don't have to put myself at a huge amount of risk, right? It's still whiffing, and I'm blocking, so I'm not going to get hit by, like, a slow homing move or something. I'll block the other move. So if I, you know, and let's do it, let's have him do two jab into DF2. I block it, because I sidestep guarding. You see, I sidestep, and then I cancel it with the block. So even though... I'm stepping to the side that DF2 is supposed to track to, because look, if I step, I get hit, right? But I'm doing the same exact defensive option versus both of these, and I'm beating both of them just by doing sidestep guard. See? Now, if you have a read, again, if you have a read that Jack is going to do uh, Jackhammer and you want, like, a huge punish, you know, you can you can go for a sidewalk and get, like, a, you know, an easy mode launch. If you have a read that he's going to do DF2, move to the right. Why am I getting hit? Why am I getting hit? Is it because it's after a jab? It's probably because it's after a jab. What, uh, does he have, what, does Jack have a move that's zero on block? I don't think he does, does he? Well, how about I have him just with the jab? Maybe that will, no, maybe we can do it like that. Yeah, okay, there we go. If he, if he, you know, it's like some moves track at plus one for no reason, but you guys can see it's, it's weak to, to the right side, right? Just randomly getting hit because it's T7. Why the fuck am I getting hit? I'm so confused. Is this like a weird drag thing? I don't think Jack has a move that's zero on block. So I can't... I can't really test it. But this is another thing where matchup knowledge is going to be really important. Right? So... That's, that's very strange, though. That's very strange. But again, another another key move, like 2-1. Two, two, you can move around that to the right. This, though, you know... Things like this, like strings, if we end up sidestep guarding these, we can't really get a punish, right? So we want to kind of move around and sidewalk when we have a read that he's going to do something like this. But for the bigger moves like the DF2 and the and the FF1, we can just sidestep guard and we'll be totally fine. And even if we sidestep right guard here, we end up blocking it. We're not going to get hit, right? 
so it's fine. But if I sidewalk left, I got it. Even if I sidestep guard, it whips. So to reiterate and to answer your question, it's matchup knowledge, right? Knowing when to sidestep is matchup knowledge. And it's also a timing thing. Because like we talked about earlier with players that change their timing a lot, it becomes a lot harder to step. If this jack player is always doing two jab into a button, then it's hella easy to just move around it, right? Like I showed earlier. I can just move to the left, sidestep guard, and I'm good. But if this jack player is doing like two jab into like dashing in my face ff1 then i'm like all right two jab okay sidewalk left oh i don't know what's going on oh okay like you know becomes a lot harder to deal with you have to use more options Long as fire, yeah. Should I have stepped DF2 right up to 2 jab? I mean, you, you're you supposed to step DF2 right. I, don't, I, I mean, like, <laughs> it's a drag thing, I guess. I mean, drag has good movement, but he's not able to do it for some reason. Let me check with Brian. If Brian can do it, then it's a weird drag inconsistency. And if Brian can't do it, then I guess it just has hella tracking at plus one. Yeah, I guess it just has hella tracking at plus one. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We're gonna make our lives easy. It's a pseudo big? Nah, Brian's not a pseudo big. His movement is average. He just feels big. All right, so we're gonna have him do forward three and the side step right. See? With a zero on block move, you're all good. It just shows that moves have really fucking weird tracking at plus one. It's interesting. Very interesting. Now see after one plus two, one. Okay, yeah, so let's check again. I don't know, man. Jack's two jab is just too good, I guess. Now it hits him. So like point blank range zero. I think it's DF2. So this is actually, you know, the fact that we fucked that up earlier with Jax2 jab is actually really good because now we can segue into the factor of you have to lab tracking because tracking is hella weird in this game. So we learned something new, which is that Jax DF2 if you're if you're at range zero it tracks sidestep right but if you're any farther than range zero you can move around it see look range zero look okay we're perfectly range zero it tracks we're a little bit farther let's get a little bit farther like out here easy now it hits <laughs> it's, it's random man it's it's completely it's it's hard to dictate stuff like that but there is a there you know there's a reason behind it so, to reiterate, when should I sidestep in Tekken 7? You should sidestep when you know that your opponent is going to do a move that you know how to move around. If you don't know how to move around a character, trying to sidestep in neutral is just going to get you killed, right? You have to have matchup knowledge, you have to have character knowledge, you have to have, you have to lab shit to really be able to move around effectively. Because even me, I thought Jax 2 jab into DF2, you could easily step it to the right, but I learned that at range zero, you have to um, you have to be farther. So that's basically the answer to your question. Bro, that's so much to remember. You don't have to really remember the intricacies, right? Because how often is this situation gonna really happen that you're at range zero trying to move around a DF2 and you get hit? Because most of the time that you're going to be trying to sidestep, it's not really at range zero. It's kind of more out in like this two range against Jack, right? Because you want to stop him from approaching with that FF1 and that down back one. That's when you're going to really be trying to step him. So, again, matchup knowledge. We'll go over one more really quick 
example. So let's do Brian, right? Okay, I block a back one. I go right for his DF2. And I go left for his down two. Easy to remember, right? If I go right, I get hit. Easy to remember. So now it's up to us to have the decision making to be ready for this. But again, let's try another sidestep guard. So we sidestep guarded and that down two completely whiffed. We sidestep guarded here. We end up blocking the DF2. So we don't get hit. So we're killing two options with one. That's the that's why sidestep guarding is important. And also, let's say he's doing mock kick. Obviously, we're also going to block the mock kick. This is the importance of sidestep guard.